1140 The Fan. Talking money! And we're back. It's Talking Money with Jeff Tarbell. Right, right. How you doing? We're here. Our phone screener says we need to uh, announce our call in the win plan again a little bit. So, yeah, you can you can win twice in a year, and you. But I think there's a ni- there's a ninety day rule between winning. So if you if you're calling in to win something and you won in the last ninety days, you have to get your calendar out. Some of you sil- serial uh, prize winners there. <laughs> we did get a quiz. Let's re- let me read the answer or the question again because we were going to break there and the music was a little loud and so. Pebble Beach, that area around Pebble Beach is trying to do, been trying to do what? They've been trying to expand? Expand. Okay. Hotels, home lots. Yeah, another hotel. And, and the and, current hotels to expand them. Okay. So, and and, and, and I, I did see like the California Coastal Commission, I guess like in 07, rejected there. It was approved and then rejected it. So they have the ultimate say of what goes on along the coast. Yeah, this has been going on for a long time. So they got resolved. So the quiz question was, who are some of the top key players in the in the ownership group of that? Of the star-studded ownership group. Star-studded ownership group. Okay, and and, and Tom was our winner. Tom got that right. So um, you would think it would be someone golf-related. So I was thinking like like a Mickelson or... Um, Nicholas or Palmer or one of those guys. Which which one of those, right? You got Palmer. Okay, Arnold Palmer is one of them, all right. Uh, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood, which makes sense because he's been the mayor down there. And, and who, who else was in that group? Uh, Peter Ubroth. Peter Ubroth, former Major League Baseball commissioner. commissioner. And I think he also headed up part of the Olympics and some other things too. So so coming soon, we'll have some, I guess the, if, I, if I saw that part of it, there was the discussion about taking down trees. Right, you had uh, there was they had to remove quite a few trees to get it in there. That was, I think, one of the big issues. Some eighteen thousand trees would hmm. be removed. Okay, so that was probably a big deal. That's but they, but a they, deal. they preserved a lot of open space. So that'll be an interesting, interesting uh, deal to see that come out. So that's Definitely. such a such a gorgeous area. Are you gonna buy a house down there? Uh, no, I'm not gonna buy a house down there. I don't, I, you know, I'm not a really a, really a golfer. It's pretty down there, but you can find cheaper, pretty places. You could ride around seventeen mile drive a couple times. Yeah, you could. You could walk around half the time and throw up. <laughs> <laughs> Off the text line at forty four eleven forty, Jeff. The hopper counts. Uh, the hopper. This is going back to our Dish Network. Hop, hop the commercials. The hopper counts skipped commercials, and the advertiser is not charged for unseen commercials. Content producers want to avoid paying when people manually skip them anyway. Okay, so how does that work? Because if, Chev- if Chevrolet signs a huge contract with Fox. They're going to get a refund because John, John and Carmichael just skipped over one of their Chevrolet commercials. You know, I, I don't know. And so, and even and even if that's the case, we are still allowing the product. The, the product, the TV show, still comes across the air, and the producer of the product doesn't get paid. Now, maybe they didn't get charged, but they didn't get paid, right? So they're still not getting their money. And so if, if everybody's skipping commercials, and so then Chevrolet says, okay, great. So instead of paying $3 million for, the, you know, for our spots, we're paying two. But they're not, you know, they're not getting, their, their spot's not getting seen. The TV producer, the Fox and the CBS, they're not getting their money. So they can't afford to produce new shows if they're not getting their money. Yeah, they didn't spend money for ads that didn't get seen, but they didn't get revenue. Right. And so what we're talking about is a revenue decline. And it's great if they're, if they're actually paying for what, what actually gets seen, but we're actually re- allowing people to reduce the number of commercials that are getting seen, and so that's it's going to have a problem. You know, it's going to, it's going to have a fallback on uh, if less revenue comes in, then there's less revenue that can be spent on creating new product and paying for new shows, and you know, it goes on down the line. So, I, I appreciate that comment. That's a good comment, and that's probably a good way to account for it. But it still it still means there's less less dollars coming in the door. That's why we need engineers to figure all that out. We need engineers, yeah, or people with good big old calculators. Hey, we'll do this before the break, too. If you want a, a pair of tickets to Hangtown next Saturday, the first caller at 339-1140 or 1-800-920-1140. You can text me if you want to. You can text me your name and, and uh, phone number. Uh, we'll give you a pair of tickets to Hangtown next Saturday and a Hangtown T-shirt for the 40... Let's see, they started the same year I was born. I think it's the 46th annual Hangtown next Saturday. Awesome. Which always falls on my birthday weekend there, so... There's still shopping days for you if you're looking for a thing. Hey, anybody anybody out there left-handed? I've been carrying this article for, when was the date of this article? December 6th. I've been carrying this article for a while. Anybody left-handed? Yeah, she raised his left hand, too. Anybody else? Chris, you left-handed? Nope. I am right-handed. John, you left or right? Right-handed. Okay. The health risk, this is part of the health segment, the Dr. Oz segment of the show. 
Three three nine eleven forty. Jump in if you're left-handed. Tell me if you experience any of these. But the health risks of being left-handed. And by the way, six of the last twelve presidents. Okay, well, so that's half. So like, this is like six of the last twelve. That's not a big one. Six of the last twelve U.S. presidents, including Barack Obama and George H.W. Bush, have been left-handed. So here you go. The uh, issues of being left-handed, according to Shirley Wang of the Wall Street Journal. December 11th, two, December 6th, 2011, left-handed people earn on average 10% lower salaries than righties, according, according to a recent survey. Findings of some, uh, some earlier studies have been mixed. Despite popular misperceptions, lefties aren't more accident-prone than right-handed people and don't tend to die at a younger age. So you got that going for you. Left-handedness has been linked to increased risk of certain neurodevelopment disorders and schizophrenia and ADHD. Mixed-handed people, so if you can do it right with both or left, are even higher risk for schizophrenia, ADHD, and neurodevelopmental disorders. So if you can write with both hands, you're crazy, according to this article. Most people's brains have a dominant side. More symmetrical brains of mixed-handed people explain the link to some neural disorders. Here you go. Left-handed people make up about 10% of the population, and 1% appear not to be dominant at all. Being left-handed is only partially genetic, and for some reasons not clearly understood. Handedness develops, uh, depends mainly on how a baby's brain develops while in the womb. And on average, there is no difference in the intelligence between right and left-handed people, but lefties do better on creativity and divergent thinking. So you're more likely to have ADHD and schizophrenia. You're going to make 10% less money, and you have a very good chance of being president. And those probably are all related to the that's, that's <laughs> running for office. Statistics. So there you go. Did you get all the... You get all the. You, know, you, missed, you were on the phone. You were working. I will save this article for you. Here, our, our left-handed... The only left-handed person in the building can come read this. And, and she, in fact, is ADHD, so that would be perfect for her. And uh, <laughs> you could be president too. You're president of the phone answering the schizophrenia? club. Schizophrenia. <laughs> so um, be careful when you hire relatives, folks. When you give them comments on the air, there. So if you were left-handed, I'm not sure whether that's good or bad. Now after reading the whole article, I'm, I don't. But you're going to make 10. percent I don't know why you make 10 percent left money. Maybe you couldn't get the last zero when you wrote when you wrote out your the salary you wanted. They couldn't. You smeared the you smeared the thing with your left hand. So I'm not sure how that works out either way. So. On the last of them, oh, did I, I did mention before the break there, if you're thinking about buying Facebook. Yeah, of course you, can, you got the inside scoop? I got the scoop. This is how you got to go down. First off, you're not going to be able to buy any Facebook until it comes out, 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 out. So you're going to miss the initial run-up, as you would have with LinkedIn, uh, Pandora, and Groupon. So, but there's a great little chart here that says, um, maybe you don't want to buy these stocks right off the bat. But maybe you do want to buy them down the road. And they gave us a little uh, change in share price graph that links uh, LinkedIn, Pandora, and Groupon. It gives a little chart when they came out and about the time they dove down. And then almost all of them, with the exception of Groupon, have come back. So you look at this chart. They use a chart where three of them came out. Uh, two of them came out in 2011. The price went up uh, almost... Uh, Excuse me. The price on the first month went down about 20%, rebounded up about 20% two months later, back down again about six months to the near the bottom, and then kind of just you know jigged and jagged. But it looked like at the one-year mark, the price had finally settled out at the low point and then started to either continue its growth or was just going to fizzle out. Groupon has just kind of fizzled. The rest of them have to kind of taken off a little bit after their one-year mark. So you look at this and, and basically it says, hey, don't don't buy on the hype, which is good for anything, right? Let the hype come yes. out. Let, let everybody settle down. Let everybody shoot, shoot pot shots at them, and then let things settle down. But eventually, these companies that have a good, a good basis will eventually to grow again. And if you look at this chart here, which is purely scientific because I'm using my fingers and I'm moving up and down and I'm trying to find all these little marks here, it's about, it looks to me about a year that the company seems to settle out. People find, realize that what they're going to do and what they're not going to do, and then it starts to kind of move, move its way on. So... Facebook, um, according to this article, has some challenges they have not overcome yet, and primarily around its mobile usage and mobile device. And I don't know if you saw, I, I logged on to Facebook last night, and I saw something new that I hadn't seen before, and it said, um, if you, if, it, gave me, it gave me a Facebook address, and that's, that's always hard, right? If someone says, you know, if you have a, if you have a name that's, you know, no, your name is, is unique enough that, 
there might there might not be a hundred John Fodereros, but and there's not a hundred Jeff Tarbells. But if you're looking for somebody, you know, you got to scroll. You, you may never find them. So it, it assigned me a, you know, your Facebook name is Jeff Tarbell seven. So if someone's looking for you, that's your unique address. And then it also wanted to give me an email address at Facebook.com. So you can see they're trying to get people to start using kind of right. this, you know, this online and this mo- and this mobile thing a little bit more. And I don't know if anybody else has saw that, or maybe I'm just late to the party and didn't see it, but. When you go onto your your you know your your homepage there, it asks you and it says you if you want to trade your change your email address you can. But they're trying to get people to start using this more and you know that is my ad, my email address and 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 using that more. But they have a, they have a mobile problem at Facebook according to the the pundits. But don't buy Facebook on day one and uh, let it settle out a little bit and maybe you can make some money down the road. I still think it's, it would be a good stock to have you know going forward. Sure. How many shares you want? I'll take a hundred. So the, the article contends that if the price gets over, if the value of the company gets over hundred billion, don't you know? Don't buy. That's 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 overvalued. The run up, the, right? Yeah. Let let it let it run up, let it run back down, and, and get it when the total value of the company is under hundred billion dollars. Speaking of billions of dollars, then we got to take a break for the hour here. I did note this week that the post office has decided to reject all theory or all um, suggestions that they. Trim some weekday use or some Saturday delivery. Close some branches. Try to rein in some costs. And the post office has uh, patently re- re- patently rejected all of the uh, items from uh, various sources of, of revenue savings, and are now on pace at losing, at least in the last six months, losing a billion dollars a month. One wow. billion dollars a month they're losing. Part of that is not operational losses. Part of it is is they are forced to put um, a certain numbers of dollars, and it's in the billions, into their retirement funds for and, and fund their retirement as they go along, which is a good thing. I mean, they're, they're making them pay as they go. The problem is, is they're just not r- being run properly. And I still contend that it is not entirely the post office's fault, and it may not be really any of the post office's fault. They're being run by a government that is professional at losing money. So to catch up, what's the price of a stamp? Well... To catch up a billion did you say a billion a month a billion a month wow. and part of the, yeah so they're, they're i I, th- I mean i think we're at the point now we, we just have to say you know what let's cut the post office loose let's let them sink or swim and let them run the way they, they think it should be run if they want to keep every branch open keep every branch open if the stamp needs to be a buck and a half then the stamp's a buck and a half and then we will either decide as a consumer if we want to send them send a letter or we do not and if we don't and they don't get the revenue there's no protection for them from the U.S. taxpayer anymore. We have plenty of services of ways of getting our mail and our message across. That I, in my opinion, we do not have to support the post office anymore, and I think they are probably for that also. Yeah, I think in that article, too, it talked about a lot of different things the Postal Service could do if they were on their own mm-hmm. to make revenue. They could do some phenomenal marketing. Right. They can do things. I would put a big old JeffTarbell.com logo on the side of some post office trucks. Why not? Why does it have to say U.S. Post Service on the truck? Why can't it say my logo on it? They're right. driving around every house, every every neighborhood. Why can't Why can't the stamps have my company logo on them? I mean, if I want to pay, if I want to pay the bill, so maybe the stamp has to be sixty five cents. But maybe I'm willing to pay a nickel of every stamp that you buy as long as it's got my company logo on it and, and on the truck and on the guy's hat. It was like we'll t- turn the post office into like NASCAR. There you go. I mean, they're, 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 you know, they're stickered out. I mean, they're, they're in every single neighborhood every day. They're touching every single consumer in this country. I want my, if I'm Coca-Cola or Chevy or somebody, I want my name. I want, I want to be all over that. Why, why can't I do that? The post office could raise all kinds of money. Yeah, definitely. So if you, and, and there's a lot of you that listen to the show that, li- that are working in the post office or have some knowledge, I'll be happy to take your input too after the break. This is Talking Money. Our numbers here are 339-1140, 1-800-920-1140. You can text us at 441140 if you want, or you can just sit down and shut up and listen. Up to you. My name is Jeff Tarbell. That's John Fodorero. We'll be right back. Jack. Yeah.